Hi everyone, I'm Pam Smith, registered dietitian, nutritionist, and chef, here to tell you about the wonders of mushrooms. If you've not caught on to the hottest thing, actually one of the top trends in not just culinary, but nutrition, yeah, you're right. Mushrooms are it every year, just exceeding every kind of bar for the gold standard of what um, we're looking for because of all that mushrooms provide. I've had the chance to work with the Mushroom Council now for over 10 years because the Mushroom Council was one of the founding members of the Culinary Institute of America's Healthy Menus R&D Collaborative. I'm a co-chair of that collaborative and it was about 10 years ago when we bound together trying to seek tasty solutions for a changing appetite. The Healthy Menus R&D Collaborative is a group of large volume food service um, from fast casual and QSR to casual dining and non-com. Um, the, the colleges, the universities, Compass and Sodexo and Aramark, again, coming together, kind of getting out of the competitive range and instead into a collaborative relationship of trying to see ways to be able to lower sodium, that was one of our earlier goals, but to increase produce, to be able to always focus on flavor. And it was out of that seeking of a solution that we found the blend. And the blend is what we're gonna be talking about today. You may have heard of the blend, the blended burger project. You may have heard of the blend being used in everything from incredible burgers to a taco meat, to even some of the incredible plant-based kinds of products that are rolling onto the market now. Well, I'm gonna talk about not only the blend, but talk about the incredible power of mushrooms that power that blend with not only nutrition, we all know about that, but also power it with flavor and functionality. We'll talk about all that the blend brings to the table when it comes to cooking with it, and we're going to be cooking. Every recipe that I will be doing today and tomorrow and Tuesday are all available to you. You'll have um, opportunity to jump into those recipes, get all of your questions answered, and speaking of questions, Maria is kind of at the helm to be able to help you get those questions, not only up to the tea, but also tee them up to me so that I can answer them as we go. Hopefully we'll be able to get our incredible burger done today and some incredible mini loaves and meatballs we'll be talking about too. So we'll have a chance to take any questions. You might even want to jump on the stage to be able to ask those. So let's get started. Let's get started with the blend. Now, the blend is nothing more than the incredible mushroom. Again, I'm in love with cremini mushrooms. You might know them as baby bellas or when they grow up, the portobello. But I'm also in love with just good old white button mushrooms. Either one work in this or any kind of mushroom that you might be able to have available. And especially if you're trying to go with a certain global cuisine. For example, if I'm doing kind of an Asian twist on a burger or a meatball, I might use shiitakes as compared to the cremini or compared to the white button. I might go into some of the fun ranges like oyster mushrooms or trumpet mushrooms. There's a lot of directions to go with cultivated mushrooms. And again, the Mushroom Council's website is mushroomcouncil.org. A wealth of information, not just about the differences in the varieties, but also even some of the differences in the nutritional contribution of the different varieties. One of the reasons I'm crazy about this little cremini or baby bella is because it has so much that, again, as I said earlier, brings to the table. When exposed to UV light, um, cremini mushrooms, portobello mushrooms, even this white button have an incredible supply of vitamin D. One of the only 
food sources, natural food sources of vitamin D that's not been fortified. Again, that UV light in the mushroom does just what it does in our skin. It produces that vitamin D. And, and just about four to five cremini mushrooms have well over your RDA for vitamin D. It's incredible. Again, the only vitamin D source, natural vitamin D source in the produce aisle. So pretty excited about these little puppies. But beyond that, we also know they're loaded with all kinds of other antioxidants. So um, we have selenium, we have a couple of different B vitamins that are there. And of course, ergothionine. Ergothionine is getting big news right now because what it does for helping to regenerate DNA and support the immune system. So lots to talk about, but let's go on to talk about the flavor because the blend is going to give all of that nutrition, but oh, so much more. The bin is basically a combination of those incredible mushrooms with whatever other substance you want to mix it with. It could be an animal protein. I'm going to mix it today with the grass fed meat. This is very low in fat. It's a 90-10 ratio. You could mix it with turkey or with chicken or lamb or pork or chorizo. You can mix it with anything or as we'll talk about a little bit more tomorrow when we do a recipe for a possible burger, you can mix it with all plant-based kinds of ingredients and have your own version of, again, a burger that is wow on flavor, wow on nutrition. More to come on that. To get the blue blend, we've got what we're going to blend it with, but we want to start with a roasted mushroom base. I just sliced the white button mushrooms here. All we're going to do is zap them with just a little touch of olive oil and then a seasoning. I use my Creole kitchen seasoning. You could use kosher salt and black pepper. You could use your own Creole seasoning. And all that we're going to do is just give those a pretty quick little toss and then get them onto a sheet pan a sheet pan that we're then going to put into the oven because what we're looking to do is take the moisture out of these mushrooms. That's what the oven's going to do. In the process of taking the moisture out, we're also caramelizing the flavors. That roasting of any vegetable, be it a Brussels sprout or a tomato or onions, roasting helps to draw, again, the moisture out but leaves that intensity of flavor. But wait, there's more. By drawing that moisture out, when it blends into the protein or plant-based proteins you might be mixing it with, it's going to serve a mighty purpose. Once we get this onto our sheet pan, we can get those right into the oven. I set the oven on a pretty high heat. I like to put them in at right around 400 degrees. Um, and it doesn't take long to do its work, usually about 20 to 25 minutes. And what you see see is just what we said. You have incredible evaporation. Um, you get a little over half of a moisture reduction in that mushroom. So I started out with a pound and it will cook down to just about a cup. So 16 ounces goes down to right at eight ounces. And that's important because if you need eight ounces of the roasted mushroom base, it means starting with twice as much. So I bought a pound and that's what I did. Once you have that in that dry place, you're going to let it cool for just a little bit um, just to get any of that added kind of steam out of it. And then you're going to bring it over to your trusty food processor or grinder, whatever you might be doing. You could do some quick knife action on this. But what we're looking to do is to get a fine grind to this roasted mushroom base. And I already have done so in the food processor. And what we're gonna do is just do a little bit of a whir of that. This is quite loud, so I decided to do it a little in advance, but yeah, just a quick little hit of that. And what we find is we can come down to a size particle that's almost identical to a ground meat. As I said, ground beef, ground lamb, ground turkey, whatever you might be doing. And even though this is a darker brown, these were cremini mushrooms that were, again, roasted. When you get it into the protein and it's cooked, 
you don't see it at all. What you do instead is just have this almost hidden, incredible moisture boost, flavor boost, because mushrooms, yes, loaded with vitamin D and loaded with selenium and B vitamins and potassium and B glucan, but also loaded with umami. Again, that's one of the powers, and you all know the word umami. It's that unctuousness in food. It's that craveability in food. And when you get this roasted mushroom base mixed into another protein, um, the nucleopeptides within them make a two or one plus one equal far more than two. Instead, you have this combination of umami that just leaves you literally craving just another bite. It's one of the reasons that a blended burger on a restaurant menu, and again, I work so much with restaurants, um, is always just one of the top sellers and the thing that people come back for. Why? Because it's just so craveable. Once we get this blended, we're going to put this roasted mushroom base into this blend, um, which will be in this case, as I mentioned before, the 90-10 blend of grass-fed beef. Um, generally for a burger, I'm seeking about three parts of beef or three parts of whatever the protein might be to one part mushroom. So in this case, 75-25. So I'm using about a pound and a half of the beef and I'm using a half a pound or a cup of the mushroom. So we get that into it. All that I'm gonna do is add a little bit of seasoning. I gave the recipe along with this blend, but I'm using a smoky seasoning. Again, I'm using my own PS flavor, but you'll find it's just a blend of smoked paprika with some onions and garlic, just getting incredible flavor and just a little touch of salt. Again, one of the reasons I love seasoning blends is it gives me the opportunity to really emphasize the flavor without having to go for just the classic salt and pepper kind of blend. I could do this with a spoon, but quite honestly, I'm just gonna get right into it with my hands because it's really the best way to be able to get that full development and blending of these roasted mushrooms that have been ground into, in this case, the beef. On Tuesday, because it's Taco Tuesday, if you get a chance to join me, we're gonna be doing a stepped up taco bar. And I'm gonna be doing the same blend, but doing it with turkey meat. Again, white meat turkey, turkey breast, which if you just had it as a classic turkey burger, it can be pretty dry. Hockey puck is what many people would say, but rather than having to look to turkey skin or dark meat, I'm looking instead to the blend, the roasted mushroom base. It's going to give me all of that incredible moisture. You can see I've got this nicely blended in and it's just going to kind of lose itself right in. The roasted mushroom base comes together because the particle size is identical to what the grind of the beef itself is. I'm going to use a nice antibacterial wipe on these hands and then go right back into it and form a burger. Now we have a couple of burgers here for you to take a look at. We have a full-on burger and it gives the opportunity to do a pretty good size burger. Many of you know that I had an opportunity to help to create Seasons 52. And if you know much about Seasons 52, you know that everything on the menu when we opened was less than 475 calories. Seasons 52 was the first restaurant to feature the blend um, in a large chain restaurant because was one of the only ways we could get an incredible tasting burger, but still have it under that calorie reduction. Why? Because again, 75% beef, but 25% produce, a way to be able to give the best and the best of flavor. I'm making this little protein blend um, and I'm going to sprinkle it with just a little bit of a Creole seasoning. 
Got a pan nice and hot. Gonna add just a little touch of olive oil to it. If you've not used a squeeze bottle for olive oil or even a spritz bottle, it's such a great way to be able to do what you're looking to do. And oh yeah, listen to that sizzle. What will happen as this is cooking is we'll have all of that flavor coming forth from the mushrooms and the beef cooking together. But not only will the mushrooms provide that umami, but it's also going to be a sponge for the moisture in the burger itself. This is the juiciest burger you could ever hope to have, even though it's so low in fat. Again, just a 90-10 blend. It's the functionality that comes from it. Gonna let it just kind of get there and get happy and talk about what we did as we were building it. Um, again, I build a classic burger with, again, a good size burger on a multi grain bun. And I also gave the recipe for shiitake aioli. Again, you could use shiitake, you could use the same baby bellas or cremini mushrooms for that. And just a really simple blend, also using the smoky seasoning recipe that we provided. And speaking of smoky seasoning, also use that to make a smoky tomato glaze. This could be used as your version of a ketchup on a burger, but in just a minute, we're gonna also make some blended mini loaves, like a meat loaf, but a mini loaf. And I use this as a ketchup replacement to be able to put right on top of those mini loaves. So we'll come back to that in a minute. Right now, I'm gonna get in here, do a little flip up. Look at that, look at those grill marks, absolutely perfect. So that's cooking, making its magic and happiness. Um, not only can you shape it into that full on burger size, but you can also make it into a small little slider, something I'll be doing with my possible burner tomorrow. And again, this is done with a slider bun. Also, could be built with your classic accompaniments. Use Dijon mustard, or you have a favorite mayo, or maybe a vegan mayo that you might use, which we'll talk about tomorrow with the plant-based burger that we'll be putting together. Gonna let that do its thing, and to the same blend, I'm going to come back in and add the ingredients for making what would be a classic meatloaf. Who doesn't love meatloaf? It's comfort food at its finest. The only issue with meatloaf is it takes a long time to cook. So back in the pandemic days, oh wait, are we still in them? Yes. Nonetheless, always looking for ways to shorten the cooking time. So came up with these mini loaves to do it. The same blend that I used to make the burger, but I'm gonna turn this into a meatloaf. Um, I have some panko breadcrumbs. Gonna make just a little pinade with this by beating an egg. A pinade is just breadcrumbs with a liquid. Gonna add that egg right to this, along with a little bit of garlic and some onions and red pepper. Now the onions and red pepper is really nice to take a little bit of the raw edge off. I like to saute these for just a minute or two before you get them into the loaves because they're mini loaves. They're gonna cook in just about 14 to 15 minutes. So you don't really have time for that raw edge to really come off of them. So if you can do that in a saute pan, all the better. Let's get that into it. Let's add the panade into this blend as well. And then I also like to use that same smoky seasoning that we've been using throughout. Um, you could also, again, use a kosher salt. When I use kosher, I'm a big fan of diamond crystal kosher salt because as you know, the crystal size of it enables more salt bang for the taste with a lower sodium level. Also adding just a little touch of Worcestershire sauce that adds a little more umami to this and then some fresh herbs. In this case, I'm adding some cilantro. You could also add um, some flat leaf parsley, whatever you might wish to do. Let's get that nice and blended up. Again, don't feel bad about getting into it with your hands if you need to, which I think I am exactly going to do. Yeah, and of course, 
And also always have those trusty kitchen gloves around and your home kitchen. You might want to do that just because it's just a lot easier for the cleanup. I always keep my antibacterial wipes along with me as well. So let's get that blended up. And because these are mini loaves, what I'm going to be doing is putting them into just that, a little loaf pan. Or in this case, I'm actually putting it into a muffin pan. Now, the same blend exactly can work beautifully if I make the meatballs. You just make them a little bit smaller. But I'm using my trusty scoop. Down, scoop these little puppies right in to your pan. You can spray your pan first with a little nonstick spray. And again, rather than the hour and a half or so that it would take to cook a traditional meatloaf, instead, these are going to cook so quickly. Again, you're wanting to get them to an internal temperature of about 155 degrees because then they'll be carryover cooking to make sure they're in that nice, safe zone. Once you get them cooked, you can do so many things with these mini loaves. You can serve them just as they are, or as I said, make them a little smaller and make them as meatballs and serve them with your classic spaghetti and your meatballs, but again, done in the blended burger way. I'm gonna get this, I won't make them all right now, but instead I'm gonna get this into the oven Pull out those that I've already have cooking for me. And you can get a picture of just how delicious they are. I like to touch them with just a little bit of that smoky tomato glaze as you would catch up right before you go in. Again, all that I did was just add a little bit to it. I sometimes come back around and add a little bit more, just a minute or two right before I take them off. And speaking of taking them off, I think it's time for our burger to come off. Oh yeah, loving that. If only we had smell o vision and you could see just how delicious indeed this smells. What, happens with the grill pan is you get that kind of crustiness, um, little crispiness just on the outside of it and just really works quite beautifully, which again, you can then go ahead and build into your classic kind of burger build. Um, I like to use a little bit of arugula on the bottom of the burger. I then like to put um, just a little bit of whatever your topping might be. Again, it could be the shiitake oli on the bun. It could be um, potentially some of that smoky tomato glaze, whichever direction you might want to go. But speaking of direction to go, let's also take a look at what's happening with these mini loaves. Get my little station cleaned up a little bit here. And these little mini loaves have come out of the oven. Again, I always like to temp them, but I did that right before we started, so I know just where they are. And again, might like to sprinkle them with just a little touch of either some more panko, which is already in, or maybe top it with just a little touch of some Parmesan cheese. Release those straight from, and you have a perfect little mini loaf to enjoy. These are delicious, as I said, served with orzo or with pasta, whichever kind of protein you might want to use. So quick to do, so delicious to do, and again, so flavorful. The moisture is just absolutely unbelievable. It's the fun, it's the functionality, and the flavor of the blend in all of its glory. So we've got a slider, we've got a burger that is absolutely ready to bite into, and again, we have some beautiful little blended burger mini loaves. Um, don't also fear making a lot of these in advance because you can pop them into the freezer. So easy to then just pull out, pop into the microwave to heat, or maybe right back into the oven to heat up. They're awesome to do for a crowd. They're awesome to do for a quick meal on the run. And the bottom line is they're just nutritious and delicious. So there we go. We've got it. How about some questions? Maria, what have we got going on? 
Pam, that was wonderful. Um, we don't have any questions in the chat, but if anyone would like to unmute themselves and ask a question um, directly to Pam, please do so. One of the questions I oftentimes get asked about the blend is, do you have the chance to use more of it? In this case, we used a 25, 75%, 75% of the in this case beef, 25% of the roasted mushroom base. But when I'm doing something like a loose meat, if I was gonna be doing tacos, as I'll do for Taco Tuesday, or if I was doing chili, I'll do a half and half blend. 50% of the mushroom, roasted mushroom base, 50% of whatever the other protein that I might be using. So you have a lot of variability. If you're going to be cooking something in a pan, like we did here, you could also edge it a little bit. You could use 60% beef and 40% of the mushrooms. I so oftentimes have restaurants that are cooking over an open grill, and about the lowest I can go, um, or the most I can go in that case, is that 75-25% blend. Okay, I'm not seeing anybody pop in with a question, which means that they're all racing to their kitchens, to their refrigerator, to see if you have mushrooms and to see if today is the day that you can start your own blend. If you've not done it, I can tell you how this is gonna just become your tool in the arsenal. I can't make a burger without having the blend. I can't make tacos without having the blend. It's something that I have, you can roast it and grind it and freeze it and then pull it out and have it in the refrigerator ready to use whenever you might need to need it. It's really an incredible thing. And nowadays you can actually even buy the roasted mushroom base at your grocery store. So take a look at for that as well. Okay. okay, Pam is, or excuse me, Kim is out running um, the actual booth. So if there are any other questions, feel free to go to the booth and ask them to Kim. We will be doing this every day this week at uh, 1 p.m. Pam will be here sharing recipes. So feel free to swing back by tomorrow or Tuesday. Pam, thank you so, so much for being thank here. You. So fun. I love it. And I've got a great meal ahead. I wish you were here to join me. I, I wish I was there too. Thank you so much. Because you guys have a great day. You too. Bye-bye, Maria. Bye. Bye, everybody.